Welcome back. So there are no accidents in the world, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Here you and I are to talk about old goats. You know, I mean, we, we talk about people who come yes. as subscribers. Now, when we invited you, we had no idea that that would be that what, I was the film, an old goat. what the film would be. No, no, I knew you were an old goat. We just didn't know that we would have a film called Old Goats to talk about. And um, I have to say that some of you, and Carl may have been uh, one of them, have said to me over the last year or two, hey, you know, you have a a lot of films that are really focused on women and, um, and, and issues about women and for women. And when are you going to have a movie about guys? Well, <laughs> for better or for worse, this eccentric movie. And when I first saw this movie, I was like, wait a minute, in the beginning, is this a dramatic film or is this a documentary? I agree. Did I you have, have the same, same feeling? feeling? I still don't know. Yeah, well, no, it's a dramatic film. I mean, oh, they, it is. Yeah, they, they play themselves. They play themselves, but it's, it, it, and it's, some of it is loosely based on experiences that they've okay. had. But this was not a documentary. This is actually, it, it, that's why I was so, one of the reasons I was so fascinated by it, which is here are these old goats, yeah. all of whom are set in their ways, and I'm sure you're not, right? I mean, exactly. right, I'm right. sure you're incredibly yeah. flexible, yeah. and as we get older, we <laughs> all get set in our ways. And they all have these very individual challenges that they kind of go through. Mm -hmm. And um, before we jump into it um, and talk about some of the other issues as well, I just want to say something about male friendship, because this is something that doesn't get talked about a lot in films, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure we've done a film on that in a long time. Guys who have been friends together for a long time. And mm -hmm. uh, I know in my life, I have two friends. One, I'm, I'm 66 years old now. I have one friend who has been my friend since we were five years old. We walked wow. into first grade together, the first day of first grade in 1951. And I have another friend who has been my dear friend since we were in uh, freshman in college when we were 18 or 19. And there is something, and I know this is the same for women as well, there is something about having these long-term friendships yeah. that is really kind of magical and special and that you, that this film kind of really touches on in a way that I, f I found really kind of heartwarming. So anyway, what was your, I agree. what were your responses yeah. to this? Um, it is uh, charming and, and I, I thought bittersweet. You know, because there was a lot of things you really loved about these guys and some things are so sad, oh, so yeah. <laughs> heartbreaking, you know, just some yeah. of the things that happened to them and the choices and um, where they're going. So I, I definitely, and Bob, <laughs> Bob was adorable. Yes, Bob he was. Bob was just like one of those, it, those characters that jump off the yeah, page and absolutely. just like, you just loved him and he made me smile. And, and uh, just what brought them together, I mean, they didn't, none of them knew each other very long. They really mm -hmm. all just met. Yeah. And this fast friendship happened. And I think when I think about it, it, it seemed like out of loneliness or out of a peace that mm -hmm. they needed to, to fulfill, you know. Um, and for each different, for each was a little bit different. And and Brett, what a character on his boat, that boat, a, a Brit, Brit. Yeah. It, yeah. And to be doing uh, internet dating. <laughs> at, at at that age, real, I mean, and I think that's one of the things that's fun about the film too, yeah, because oh, you know today, yeah. when you know being in your 60s, 70s, and 80s today are not the way it was 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. I mean, so it's a completely different ball game. You know, we're living a lot longer and a lot more vital a lot longer. Yeah. And I found that kind of an interesting bridging of these generations. That and they talked about how they used to meet women in church. Yeah. Now. You know, <laughs> not anymore. And the the Brett, that character, didn't even have a phone. No. He didn't have a computer. He didn't have any of it. So he was completely, you know, pushed into a, this uncomfortable zone and went there. But and he's the there. one that really grew. Yeah, Because, absolutely. you know, he really did. I mean, the fact absolutely. that, you know, the, the lady in red, when he actually finally, you know, does get into that relationship, which was very hard for him to do. Yeah. And there's something really beautiful in that. When she yeah. says to him, you know, I'm very comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is not something that you are going to say in a relationship when you're in your 20s or when you're in your 30s. But After when you've two lived... Weeks. Yeah, after two weeks. Yeah. When, when you live a life, mm -hmm. you're looking for a different kind of relationship. Right. And she was like, I'm comfortable. And what 
what I think she did for him, and I think this was actually one of the things that was the most touching, is that you saw him finally get into his scuba gear and go down and start cleaning off the bottom of his boat, which was, I thought, really quite Is a wonderful happened? thing. Yeah. Okay, I completely got a different take on that. T tell me, yeah. Okay, so when, when that happened, uh, it was, let's see, they had seen each other for two weeks, and she, they had that wonderful scene on the bed where they, mm -hmm. yeah. where they both opened up. He um, talked about how the boat was sentimental to him because it was given to him by his dad. Mm -hmm. So you find out why he really stayed there. It was complete, more way beyond just the boat. You know, it meant something to him. And she talked about the pictures in her family and, and how rich it was to share a life. You know, it's nice to be alone, but it's nice to share your life. And then, and then the, she asked him to move in with her mm -hmm. and kind of when she got to the boat, which I thought was funny the first time she went to the boat, mm -hmm. she kind of looked around at this boat. He said, do you want something? Yeah, maybe the water not here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> he just thought just dirty, disgustingly dirty. Well, she thought, oh, she didn't want anything. Um, and then she said, you deserve better, um, which I thought was a little sad because it was almost like a little bit of a judging of, of him and, and, and his situation. And then the next thing she's, she's saying, um, Tomorrow morning you'll move in, and he said, "All right, I'll pack up." And he oversleeps, starts putting the the books away, packing, mm -hmm. and then the next scene you see him going under water. So I thought he chose not to go with her. Yeah, you know this is an interesting yeah. thing because we had this conversation, yeah. and Anna and I had this conversation. And um, it was it is her impression, and I respect it, that he is not done with her. He just needed to take a break and get okay. his life back together and to do something more proactive, and that, that once he deals with what he's dealing with at the end of the movie, they're going to be together again. He didn't see, she did not see that. And, uh, and it's an interesting interpretation. Either. She didn't see it as them being broken up and that he wasn't going to do it. Yeah, that he was just about, getting himself prepared for what it. What about when he got the email from um, who was the one Dave who uh, moved who went uh, yeah. with his wife took off that, with his wife yeah. on his trip. Yeah. Now remember, right before now you saw Dave kind of like um, kind of disengaged from that world that he was living in, you know, uh, there and and um, and his wife again her disdain of this new friend who you know is hopeless and he was. Was it Dave? I, I hope I'm thinking the right names. Anyway, he was kind of sweet with him and saying, you know, when he fell in the pool, you know, take a shower, you know, mm -hmm. wear my mm -hmm. clothes, you know, take time to get composed before you come down. But then when his wife wanted to move to Palm Springs, Palm Springs I guess it yeah. was, and he was like, no, I really don't want to, so, you know, and she kind of pushed for that and all of a sudden they're going. And he gets an email from him saying he's staying, you know, I, he wanted to go on this this uh, this uh, cruise, but now they're not because his wife now is going there. It's almost like like he, the way I understood it, where but saw that he lost his life. He kind of lost himself in this relationship, and I think it kind of made the, the choice for him not to go with this woman. So this, that's so that, that's, see, see, no, that's so, so that is one of the things that's that's fun about this film, yeah. which is what what. How do you feel about that? I mean, what what? How do you feel? Do you feel that this is actually a relationship that he was going to pick up um, after he dealt with his friend and you know who, who yeah. fortunately for him and everybody else wasn't dead when he thought he was dead. Oh, I mean, yeah. you know how how he's going and that to me is actually the fun of this. It's yeah. the fun of okay, what did you think? How did you think about this? And of course two old goats are going to have look at this thing very differently. Yeah. How did you see it? Anyway, yeah. Carl, thank you so much. Thank you, you so welcome. much for being here uh, this month. Thank you for everything, uh, for being with The Circle as long yeah. as you have been, and for all of your communications and all of your support over the years. And uh, we'll stay in touch on Facebook again. Thank Perfect. you for coming in from Chicago and uh, having this discussion with us. It, it means pleasure. a lot for me thank you very much. to see you. Thank you again. Thanks. Welcome. And thank all of you, too, for being with us uh, this month. Uh, again, please join us and let us know what you thought about the films. Next month will be the fourth month in a row that we have a Oscar-nominated or winning short. We have a fascinating 
short called Time Freak, which was nominated for an Academy Award. Next month's going to be a very interesting month in the circle. Uh, we have a couple of very surprising films that I think will cause a lot of comment, and a wonderful love story and a comedy called Lovebirds from New Zealand, uh, which I think you're going to get a big kick out of, because when have you ever seen a duck that loves the music of the group Queen? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen a lot. That's going to happen next month in The Circle. Thanks again, and I'll see you then.